Awesome. I was getting our live prepared. Um, I'm going to wait a few minutes. I know we have a few more participants that should be joining us, and then we will jump right into the presentation. So I'm saying that to those in the room, in the Zoom, and also to those on Facebook. Uh, so just give us a few more minutes here. Uh, we'll let a few more people join us before we get started. Hello, Ms. Magdalene, how are you? I am wonderful, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, I'm happy to hear it. We're just waiting for a few more people before we jump into today's uh, session. Okay, great. And now, I just want you to know I was here, I might keep my camera off since you're on Facebook. No problem. <laughs> that is perfectly fine. Hey, Marlene, I see it's not the same. What happened? We we did the whole session. You're muted. I can't hear you. I know. And you know what? I said to myself, I, I have a feeling that for whatever reason, it I didn't do anything with it. I didn't, you know, type anything different, didn't update anything. So for whatever reason, I don't know. It's just not, it's it's bizarre. It truly is. We have, I know. Yes. We have to uh figure that out again because we went through this whole thing yesterday. I know. <laughs> the, only, the only thing I'm thinking is that the name on the very top when you're when you're you know doing the um but it, it, it depends on what your display name is and we looked and you i didn't see your display name but you yes. assured me that's what it was so yeah i i did do a a screen grab before before i came over i did a screen grab you know like a couple of days before when i was uh setting the appointment up let me email that to you okay so you can, so you can see what okay yep please that'd be great that'd be great I, I know, I know. <laughs> All right. Ugh. All right. So I'll go ahead and get started again. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. I was just allowing a few more people to join. And I know we're still missing quite a few people from our registration list, but I do want to make the most of the hour, of course. I'm really excited about today because it's a non-traditional session. I prob I'll try not to bore you to death with me talking the entire time. Um, let me get ready to share my screen. And welcome, welcome everyone. If you are joining us for the first time, uh, let me do a quick introduction actually before I share my screen. If you are joining us for the first time ever, I am Magalie Ascent. I serve as the in room executive director for Hustle Winston Salem, which is a organization dedicated to inclusive entrepreneurship. Um, and this particular program, Marketing Outside the Box, definitely came um, as a result from responses from small business owners and entrepreneurs in our community that um, shared with us that there was a big need for them needing assistance in their marketing efforts. Um, so we do this in collaboration with Foresight Tech Small Business Center, as well as Flywheel Coworking, which are both way, um, located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where we are. So if you are joining us from outside of the area, welcome to, uh, welcome to our city virtually. Um, and if you are in Winston-Salem, glad to have you here. Of course, if you're in the Triad area as well or anywhere in North Carolina, so happy to have you here with us. Um, I'll go ahead uh, and ask you if you can to please feel free to use the chat. And for those on Facebook, use the comment section to introduce yourself, your business or anything of that nature. Today's session will be more engaging. So I do think, you know, depending on how many people are in the room at the time, we will have an opportunity to actually get to hear from each other today, um, as opposed to a lot of the principles and things of that that we've been going through over the last few weeks. So let me get the screen up here and then we'll jump right into it. Let's see here. And can someone just confirm for me what screen you are seeing? I have like three in front of me and I wanna make sure I share the right thing. Your title screen, The Art of Virtual Networking. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think that was Tasha. Thank you so much, Tasha, who's also part of our team. 
Okay, so I'll do a quick review for those that may not have been with us the last three sessions, because I think today is the fourth session of this series. Um, so we've pretty much been discussing the importance of networking as it relates to marketing and understanding that networking is the least expensive, expensive form of marketing that you can do for your business. Um, building those relationships matter and it makes a difference in people wanting to support your, your, your business or your, your service. Um, and we've just been going through ways to navigate networking both in a um, virtual space, a hybrid space. The very first week we talked a little bit about networking when we were in person and, you know, sooner, sooner rather than later, we may be in person again and just applying some of those same principles um, in that case. Uh, and next week, we won't go through it too much today. Next, the first week, we also reviewed this video, but we are going to come back to this video during the last week next week. Um, so you'll learn more about that. We reviewed some 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 concepts, uh, talked a little bit through some of these concepts. Again, if you have not been with us throughout the series, you can find the previous videos all on our Facebook page. Um, and I'm just kind of going through the slides so I can catch up to where we are today. But you can go to our Facebook page, that's Hustle Winston-Salem, to review any of the videos from the past few weeks. Um, or you can always email us at hustlewsinfo at gmail.com. Tasha, if you can be so kind to put that in the chat for us, um, for anyone that may need to contact us regarding any previous uh, videos or resources that we have provided in the last few weeks. I'm just catching us up here. But today we're particularly focused on, um, and everything you're seeing is from last week, we talked about uh, specifically vir virtual, um, but today we're specifically focused on engagement. So as a reminder from what I said earlier, um, we know that networking and marketing really, you, you can't, you, it kind of helps your business more than, than not, right? So um, last week we focused a lot on uh, hosting a networking, like if you were the host or if you attended a, a larger uh, session or event or something like that virtually or in a hybrid setting, that um, you could ways that you can engage and participate and really make the use the best use of networking in those areas. Today, this week, we're focused more on um, you as an individual networking one on one networking in smaller groups that will be kind of the focus of today and how to make sure you're you're using those engagement tactics. Now, because we're focused on small groups and, and one on ones doesn't mean you can't take these same ideas and apply them in the larger networking settings that we talked about in previous weeks. So I just wanna make sure that that's clear. I mean, as we talk through these networking and engagement ideas, I also want you to really think about the best ways that you are going to um, implement them um, for your business, whether that's implementing them with a potential client, a potential investor, someone that you wanna do business with, a customer, someone on your team, like there are various ways that you can think about making this work for you and your business. Um, so I just kind of want you to, to keep that in mind as we go through this particular session. And again, if you haven't been with us before, um, our process is fairly simple. If you have a question, you can drop it in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself. Um, and we will respond to any questions throughout, this, throughout the session. Um, if you drop it in the, chat, in the chat, someone from the Hustle team, whether it's Tasha, or if Tony's with us, who's on our board, if Tony's here, she'll also uh, grab it. So either way, someone will be on the lookout for it. And that, that, that same thing goes for those of you joining us from um, Facebook. All right. So again, we're gonna do a, we're gonna talk a little bit through some of the things you see on the screen, and then we're gonna do some in, in engagement activities. So first thing here that you're seeing is a few networking ideas. So as I've mentioned, um, when we think about networking, it's all about relationship building. Like that's the focus. And even if it's relationship goal building with a specific goal, like you're building this relationship because ultimately you want this person to um, be a mentor, be a coach. You want this person to invest in your business idea, whatever, that's fine. Don't, you don't have to feel any type of way about 
having a goal in mind, that's that's okay. That's the nature of business. Um, but you still want it to be a genuine relationship that you built. So, you know, think about pre-COVID, think about pre-hybrid, pre, pre-virtual. What would you have done to engage with people anyways? You know, we would have gone to coffee, had lunch, dinners, sports, go, go to a sport game, um, go to a bar, park, whatever. The point is you would have done something that was a bit more fun and engaging outside, you know, just outside of just jumping right into whatever you want for this for, from people. Because what we've learned during this um, interesting time in our lives is that uh, we'll get on a Zoom, especially since a lot of us are Zoomed out, we'll get on a Zoom or any one of these other platforms and we'll really jump right into the purpose of why we're, we're here. We're, and, we'll, and we think it we're being courteous. We're like, well, we don't want to waste your time. So um, let's just jump right into it. This is my pitch. I need XK dollars to do whatever I'm doing, or I've been trying to figure out this marketing situation and I, I need whatever, right? And, and we think we're doing people courtesy. And, and sometimes that's fine. I, I want to make sure I'm not giving you the impression that, you know, that's not okay, but this is the importance of really knowing your audience, knowing their time. Um, if, you're, if your goal is specifically that you're trying to network with this individual or these group of people for an ultimate cause, you want to be a little bit more strategic. And again, if they said to you in advance that, you know, I only have 45 minutes and you know that your pitch is 30 minutes and you need time for questions, then yes, you might not want to do a lot of these engagement things. Um, but again, think about these for one-on-ones and for group situations. Um, whether it's with your team or whether it's an external party, okay? So the first thing that you see there, we, you've heard heard me mention coffees and teas and tea a lot over the last few weeks, but I didn't really go through, um, you know, ways and how you can do it. I think last week I mentioned, you know, you going, if, you, if your person is out of town, you going to a coffee shop and they go into a coffee shop and y'all kind of getting that experience together as you have that meeting. But I really encourage that you schedule a virtual tea or coffee chat. Think about it more as having it with a chat meeting that you're getting to know these people. So it's a great way of doing networking. So again, both in one-on-one -on -one settings and small groups. So you, you can do it where you brew a cup, you decide to brew a cup at the same time. Let's just say we're going to have an 830 meeting. And part of our meeting is, you know, the first, what, I mean, tea, for the most, the, the longest tea should take you is probably 10 minutes. That's the absolute longest, right? But anyways, you're, you're brewing, brewing a cup of tea. You can, while you're doing that, that person could take a moment to tell you what type of tea they're making. You can do that. Um, or if it's coffee, you can just say, you know, I like my coffee, whatever. You, you just, the point is you're doing it together. It could be a phone call. It could be a Zoom. However, the idea is you're using a few minutes to build that relationship and you're learning something about that person, they're learning something about you, you may find that you have something in common. Y'all might have the, y'all might share the same favorite tea. Um, and that, that, that helps in your networking. That's like, oh yeah, that if that person don't remember anything about you, they'll remember we, we like the same tea. Yeah. And th these are ways that simple, sounds crazy, but these are simple things and how people determine if they're going to support the business. Because, you know, I think we, most of us know this, People don't necessarily support businesses. People support people. I think many of you know this by now as small business owners. They support you as a person. If they know you as a person, trust you as a person, they're likely to spend their dollars with you, okay? So think about that. And if you're not really in the, in the, in the thought process of brewing a cup of coffee or, or, or anything like that, you'll probably hear me say this several times, send them a gift card in advance. Send a gift card to a, a coffee shop that either both of you have access to um, like a Starbucks, which you, we all know is a chain coffee location, or if you're in the same community, maybe you send it to a coffee shop in the community that's, that's really well known, a local coffee shop, but you send them a gift card to get their tea, get their coffee, whatever, and you pretty much have that same concept. Okay. And that idea similarly, it's almost similar, but not exactly with the virtual happy hour kids. So with the virtual happy hour kids, this is really like, think about Pre-COVID, I don't know how much networking you did do, but let's just say you did attend some of your community happy hours that maybe your chamber hosted or or something of that nature, or your individual happy hours that you um, you decided to meet with someone, whether it was for dinner or, or just right before, right when you got off of work, before you went home, you decided let's meet up really quickly to chat about this. Same concept, except in this case, 
you're going to send a happy hour box, right? In, in a virtual or hybrid setting, you're sending a box in advance. So again, some of this stuff requires you doing things in advance. Um, but again, if you're, you think about your goal, always think about your goal. If your goal is ultimately, I want, I know that this person is an investor. I want them to invest, let's say $10,000 into my business. You're going to want to put your best foot forward, even in, in virtual in virtual settings. So send them a happy hour box. And if you you're not crafty like me, because I'm not crafty, you're not crafty like me. You really don't have the energy or the time to think through making a, a box with maybe two local beers or whatever, you know, some some peanuts or whatever. There are companies literally that you can purchase this from and make your life easier. You can literally order it online have it sent to that person prior to and leave a little note that says open at our meeting time, you know, and you just kind of make it more engaging that way. Again, the focus of today's engagement. Um, and it's a great way. And honestly, if normally when you're thinking about networking in happy hour settings, I would say eight times out of 10, you're not actually talking business. You're not actually trying to make a sale. You're not actually talking about your company in that moment. You are getting to know the person and they are getting to know you. That still applies in a virtual setting um, when you're networking in that way. So you make sure that you use, you, you think about that. And, and of, of course, a happy hour don't have to be um, alcoholic beverages. So for, for those that are not wine drinkers or or you don't drink hard liquor or anything like that. You can change that to be whatever you want inside that box. But, you know, think about different conversations that you can have, if not specifically business related, because it matters. Building those relationships and not just making the person feel like you're boring them with work after they just got off of work. Because think about it, it's still virtual, potentially. They probably just got done with the work day. They probably don't want to talk about more work, but you want to build that relationship. Think about conversations you can have. Um, and a great way to do that is by doing a whole bunch of icebreakers. And we'll, we'll get on icebreakers um, a little bit later in this, because that's how we're going to do a lot of our engagement. Next, you see on there, um, lunch and learns. And I put I put the word stipend next to it because it's the same idea like um, you can determine as part of your marketing budget, um, you know, where normally you would have been spending money to go to a conference related to your industry or something like that. You can you can put a stipend in your marketing budget where you're actually spending money to to send someone, if you figured out their favorite restaurant, if you got to know them well enough or a group of people, you can have lunch delivered on you to them before y'all your lunch meeting with them, right? And y'all are having lunch together in that way. If you don't know their restaurant, again, gift cards or some, determine what your your limit is. And I, that's why I put the word stipend because we can get overboard with this if, we, if we're doing too many one-on-one -on -one networking. And again, you, you don't have to do this with everyone. You, you just, you determine, which one of those situations make that difference in why you would need to go this extra step and engage with this person in that way or this group of people in that way. Um, um, and again, this applies internally as well, even if you're not thinking about it from a marketing standpoint, these are great ways to engage with your team, all right, or with your community. These are also situations where you can make it casual or you can make it specific to business. Lunch is kind of you know, lunchtime is kind of iffy like that. You can decide we're going to talk business during this lunch meeting, which is why I've gone the extra step to make sure you have a good hearty meal and are in a good in a good mood because I know I'm about to pitch my business idea um, and I know I'm going to be asking you for something and it don't have to be money that you're asking them for, but whatever it is, you know that there is an ask at the end of your pitch. Um, so you want to do what you need to do from a marketing standpoint, make sure they know your business and they're in a mindset to really understand and support your business. Um, as, as small business owners and entrepreneurs, we have to think outside of the box in this way. Um, let's see here. Theme your Zoom calls. Theme your whatever calls. It doesn't necessarily have to be Zoom. I'm, I just use Zoom because we're on a Zoom. Um, but I'm, I'm, I hope most of you are familiar with the process of how to change your background on your Zoom, right? So this actually is really popular. Even if you're meeting with someone one-on-one, -on -one, you, you say to them in the email prior to, hey, when we meet, can you 
upload your background photo or you can do it while you're on the call upload your background photo to your favorite movie let them have the background be your favorite movie or or let's go let's have this meeting at the beach it's it's you know let's let's all everybody have a beach background or whatever you know let's have this meeting at the mountains um or you can just ask ask people hey when you meet just have a background that um tells me something about you and, and, and you can make that an icebreaker when you start the meeting. Why do you choose that background? Let me learn something about you. So this also helps you understand the personality of the potential customer, client, investor, et cetera, that you are on a Zoom with. Um, and again, this works in one-on-one -on -one settings or group settings, um, but just kind of think of that as a way to how you can bring engagement into it. So if I were to ask everybody right now to change your background to your favorite photo on your camera, I mean, on your on your computer, whatever. I'm not doing that, but just you know, th those are just ideas. And if you, you know, if this was a group of maybe three or four people, and I did that, I, I could have easily said, okay, now tell me why is that your favorite photo? What memory does it bring? Like I would get to know you in that way before we start whatever we're doing. I'm not gonna do that because if I did that with all of you, we would we would never get through <laughs> through the hour. But that's just an idea when you think about engaging um, virtually in that way. Um, you can also honestly, when you're engaging with other people and networking with other people, um, and whether this is through, you know, we talked about you, you all joining groups on Facebook that are specific to your industry and things of that nature, whether this is people you met through those groups, whether, the, whether these are people you met when you decided to go take a walk in the park, however, like use that time, use, use this newfound potential relationship to inspire healthy competition. This works in a networking way for you. Um, and it works for them um, because you're you're focused. Um, you can sync up on being focused. You all can join forces and have a power hour of problem solving. Um, and in that problem solving, they're learning about your business and you're learning about their business. It's just a great way to solve a problem because it's helping you, making sure more people know about your business. And you also are learning about businesses that you could potentially partner with, support, et cetera. Um, so this really works. Now I will say this probably works better with smaller, smaller groups. I don't really know. Like I think beyond 10 people would be way too much if you try to do it this way, but maybe even less than that is even better. Um, but, you know, I think about um, individuals particularly that are um, in, in, in uh, industries where you don't feel like you have a lot of support or a lot of a lot of people in your community that are also in that industry that you can lean on and gain insights from like you you get a lot of general helpful information but it's still general it's not specific to industry i think about those individuals and those types of businesses when you talk about healthy competition because it's not really competition um you know i always say community over competition and this is really one of those times where you're bringing the community together and you're i'm doing air quotes competing um, but really, you're not competing. You're helping each other be stronger and be better. Um, and you're building that relationship in that way, even in a virtual setting, because you can have that power hour of problem solving and brainstorming virtually as well. Um, you can also host a trivia or a game night with, with a group of people um, in, in, in particular industries. Um, Listen, there are a number, and I don't, I, I don't think I'm providing this list with that other resource. The other resource we provided you all are just engagement apps. So there, but there are a number of trivia and game applications that are as simple to access as just creating an account. Like you just create an account. That's the that's the only step you would need to do. And if you're really into that stuff, um, this is going to sound, you know, a bit out there. But de depending on the purpose that the purpose of your networking, depending on um how out there you are i'm out there so i would do this um depending on various factors and on what the goal is you can go as far as organizing like a full-on virtual murder mystery and it can be ongoing it could be where um you know you you send because i'm not sure how familiar you are all with these these uh trivia and, and mystery games online but they can send pieces to people if you want to go that far they don't have to it could all be virtual um but it could be where it's it allows you to have an ongoing relationship to network with particular people so i this may sound weird and far left to y'all 
I would do it with someone that I either want to become a mentor for me, or I would do it with someone that I eventually want them to invest in my business. And I say that because this requires, if they're willing to engage, this requires that you all meet more than one time. Because each time you're meeting, we're going to spend a few minutes trying to figure out this mystery. And you can schedule it to where you're not going to figure out the mystery until a four week window. Or if you only want to meet this person once a month, we're not going to figure out this mystery for a four month window. So you are locked into this because beyond me trying to sell you my business and, and get you to know my clients and whatever that case, whatever the situation is for you, you are also engaged into this murder mystery and we are determined to figure out who killed this person. So it really does work and think about it again. You can you can Google this. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I did not create a list of these of these resources on that list that you all received already. And if you didn't receive it, um, trust me, you'll receive it in an upcoming email. Um, and if time allows, I, I may pull that that resource together for you. But just know that you can simply Google virtual murder mysteries and you'll probably see a number of options. And even if you don't do a murder mystery, you can do a different you can go a different route. But that was just an example of how you can do that. Um, so the next one about a networking talent show, this is really for those of you who are trying to find people to network in a virtual setting. So it's not necessarily that you already identified, you know, we talked a few weeks ago about finding those particular people on, on not Instagram, on LinkedIn and on Facebook groups. And we, we talked about how you, you kind of go after those people and make sure that you're networking smart and things of that nature. But let's just say that's not the scenario. Let's say you have no idea who it is that you're trying to, to network with. You haven't determined those people you haven't identified and you didn't do that individual work yet, but you just want to be in a setting where you can meet a whole bunch of people in, um, in, in a particular industry. So let's, you can say I'm throwing, and I'll use Marlene as an example, because Marlene is in the, in the, um, Book, the book writing business and in the autism business, but let's just say you decided you want to throw, I'm throwing an autism networking talent show virtually. Um, you know what I mean? Let's just say you wanted to do that. Um, and you can have people from musicians to stand up comedians to artists, athletes, dancers, whatever they could that, that are all either support autism, uh, Marlene, or, or are they, they're living with autism or they have an autistic child that may be interested in participating in that. And you, you would figure out the details by signing up through a Google Doc or something like that for how it could all happen. But, you know, invite them all to the Zoom stage. You all get three minutes to perform. It's, it's a 45 minute event or an hour event. And in that time, you start off by introducing your business, telling them about your book, how they can buy your book, why you support autism, things of that nature. By the way, I'm not sure if you all know, but um, March, we've been celebrating Women's History Month all month, but March is also um, Disability Awareness Month, um, um, or as um, uh, we like to say, differently abled People Awareness Month. Um, and it's a great way, Marlene, to you know use things like that. I'm not saying to, you have to go do this, just an idea. Um, use things like that to really figure out how you can pull in a network right, in, in a fun way and still make it about your business, still be able to potentially make those sales um, while having fun. Um, is there a question? Yes, uh, uh, April is Autism Awareness Month. So, awesome. I gotta get, so you can yeah. do that in April. That's right, I gotta get moving on this, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, awesome. Um, so then I'm gonna skip icebreakers for a minute because we're gonna go into icebreakers next on the next screen, but the last thing Rob, is you see it says wellness. Um, as you all know, especially while we were doing things virtually, people really needed access to physical, mental, and emotional wellness. And you, you could do this networking in a way where you are getting to know people, they are getting to know you while you address the wellness. Um, you know, you have people looking for extra motivation and accountability regarding their fitness um, and mental health habits. So. You can say, hey, let's team up. Let's do once a week. Um, let's let's get on a call while you're taking a walk. I'm taking a walk. And we'll, while we're walking and working out or while we're doing our yoga sessions, uh, we're chatting on the phone and learning more about each other. Um, or you can use that time to do a, um, a meditation. So we'll do a meditation together before we jump into 
the last 30 minutes of our call being about uh, whatever it is that you all are connecting for and, and about. Um, and, and these health and fit, fitness challenges, I mean, in addition to them being good for everybody, um, they really they really got popular in this last year or so as people networked with new people um, and getting to know new people. Um, and as far as icebreakers, that's what we'll spend the second half of this discussing. I'll go into the next slide in just a moment. Um, but the idea here is kind of what I said in the beginning. So, you know, with no natural chit chat happening in a remote situation, there's not, there's not really a natural flow of conversation like it normally would be if you were like in an office setting or community event or things of that nature. Without that happening naturally, it's a, it's, it is essential in virtual settings to designate time for people to get to know each other. Um, it's, it's, it's essential, which is why we're gonna do it today. Um, so before we jump into that, any questions about some of the ideas that I've listed? And these are just some, there's so many more. I mean, if anyone wants to share a networking idea, please take this moment to do so. But before we get into some of the activities, anyone have any questions, comments? I know I see the chat. Are there any questions in there? I see it popping up. No, we're good. Tony, I'm waiting for you to give me a confirmation of some sort. Oh, yes, people are just making comments. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No problem, no problem. I just wanted to make sure I'm not ignoring anyone. Um, any comment that I, I probably could respond to or be aware of? No, we're good? I'm going to take that as a no. Oh, go ahead. There you go. I'm sorry. You're good. Okay. I'll keep going. Um, so, and I'll probably stop sharing my screen in a moment, but I want to talk about these particular icebreaker activities that I think you can participate in, in, in your, in your networking scenarios that you can create in your networking scenarios. And hopefully we can maybe do at least one or two of them. I mean, I won't have everyone participate in every single one. I'll probably take two or three volunteers as we, we kind of do this. But so there's the, the Rose Thorn virtual icebreaker. Are you all familiar with this? Um, I'm seeing some heads say no. Um, this is a really simple icebreaker. Lorena, you had a question? No? No. Mm -mm. Okay. This is a very simple, simple icebreaker. Um, if you're in a small group, um, it would take about one minute per person, but um, really what you do is you, you start a meeting or event or, or whatever, a group session, you start it off, even this is a one-on-one -on -one person, this applies well, even if it's just you and somebody else. You start it off with a, what we call a rose um, or th and a thorn. A rose is anything positive that makes them feel grateful or happy. And then a thorn is any challenge they can have. So, you know, in group coaching settings, for example, um, when I do when I do this, I make it very specific to their business. What's a rose about your business that you can share today? And what's a thorn about your business that you can share today? Right. And what that does immediately, um, even if it's new people, a group of new people on the call, I immediately know what their business is. Um, I, I may not have known what their business was in that moment, but not only do I know something good happening in their business, I know what their challenge is and what, what, what I can potentially help them with as a, as a business coach. Um, so um, that's, that's the Rose Thorn activity and I wanna do it really quickly. So if I can get maybe three volunteers, give me a Rose, give me a Thorn, um, specifically about your business, uh, specifically about your business. Um, and I will start so that you all can see. And if you don't volunteer, I'm just going to choose people. So just be ready to volunteer or just be ready to respond. But and it, for I'll use uh, my oil business, a rose with my oil, oil business. Um, a rose is that I feel great that the, the business itself is helping the environment. That's a rose. A thorn is um, which again, a thorn is a challenge. A thorn is because restaurants were so negatively impacted by COVID, my business was immediately impacted because our source of the waste cooking oil was predominantly restaurants. 
So that's a challenge that I still have um, with my oil business. So maybe two or three more people to give an example of a rose and a thorn as an icebreaker. It's so we can also get to know you and your business. I can go next. Uh, okay. uh, Rose, um, on my podcasting that I just started a few weeks ago, uh, after the third episode, someone contacted me from Chile, an old acquaintance from college, and she hired me to do a presentation for the group of uh, diversity and inclusion that she heads. That was a total surprise, completely out of the blue, and it's going to be paid. So awesome. big, big rose right there. Now the thorn is that I'm so busy with so many projects right now. Like I don't have a website for my for my podcast, and it's there because I, as long as I don't have a website, uh, I cannot monetize with the. Um, uh, paper clip or the affiliate marketing so it's a thorn but there's nothing I can do right now because I don't want to pay I want to do it myself I know I have the skills to learn to do my own website just going through the right channels but I know that after April uh, I should have some extra time in the mornings um, so kind of that's been bothering me because I should have launched hand on hand having a website so I cannot have notes like uh post episode notes with the, the things that I'm saying or what, what I'm sending people. So it's just the lack of time uh, right now. Uh, it's, it's a thorn, but it shall pass. I'm still very happy with everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. Congrats on the rose. And um, yeah, that, cha- that is a challenge. Um, you, it is a challenge. Uh, and I hope that it works out. And you have a network of people. Use them, Lorena. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Anyone else want to share a rose and a thorn? I want w- at least one more person. I'll call you out if you don't do it. Jennifer, are you there? I'll go with you. Do you have a rose and a thorn with your business? Can you? You're muted if you're talking. Jennifer, are you there? No. Nope? Okay. Well, I'll move on. Well, there she goes. There you go, Jennifer. You got it. We can't hear you, Jennifer. Okay, I think I I don't know what's happening, but I'll move on because I think you're trying to speak, but we can't hear you. Um, Danita said she'll go. Okay, perfect. Danita, go ahead. Oh, is it Danette or Danita? It's Danette. Can you guys hear me? Danette. I apologize, I'm so sorry. No problem, no problem. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, awesome. Sorry about my picture. I have been trying to use your method uh, to make sure that stays on, but we'll, I'll address that another time. <laughs> so I, I, um, I have a preschool. It's um, considered a family childcare, but I'm labeled under preschool because I have a teaching license. So I always refer to myself as preschool guys, okay? But I'm also a, a children's writer. So I combine the two. The rose is that, Having a a preschool, I have a plethora of ideas for my children's stories and, you know, a plethora. The thorn is that I do not have the time to get them written. I do not have the time to do all these great ideas that I have because uh, I do work from home and the uh, family have a difficult time understanding that just because I work from home does not mean that I am not working. (laughs) So my rose and my thorn, there you go. (laughs) That's a great example. I think many of us have that same thorn. (laughs) Uh, Thank you so much for sharing, Danette. Um, Okay, so we'll we'll go to the next one and um, I'll just choose three people uh, with the next one, but let me first describe it. And that's the, it's called a fact recall. Basically when you have a group of new people that are networking with each other, um, you just ask people to introduce themselves by giving a fact, and it doesn't have to be a real thing, a fact about them. Um, you can provide them with a prompt. You know, you can say, introduce yourself and tell us your favorite vacation destination or introduce yourself and tell us a, a show your, that's most binge worthy. So what I want to do with today, and, and the thing is each person, are, they're, they're required to rem- remember what the person before them um said 
or you can do it where you randomize it and those that 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 introduce themselves you ask them to repeat the fact that someone else said about them so what i want to do today is you introduce yourself in your business and then you also uh provide us with a a show recommendation that you love um, and then I'll explain later why I chose that particular prompt about a show, a TV show. So we'll probably only, again, do two or three people. Um, so Tony, I'll have you be one of them. Um, Nicole, are you down to be one of them? I'm gonna... Hi. Yeah, yes, okay. Uh, um, Wait, I'm gonna choose the third person before we go and then... Um, Aixa, are you down to be the third person? Yes. Okay, perfect. So Tony, Nicole, and Aixa, and basically, again, introduce yourself, tell us about your business, and then recommend a show, a TV show that you feel either is binge worthy or you just absolutely love the show. So um, Tony, you can go, then Nicole, you can go. Nicole, when you go, you have to tell us Tony's business and then your business, and then do everything else. Aixa, when you go, you have to tell us, I'll be nice and say you only have to tell us Nicole's business. You don't have to tell us Tony's business. But typically when you do this, you can have it be a train where everybody has to say everybody that went before them. Um, and Nicole, feel free to do CCE as well if you prefer. All right, Tony, you can go first. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Barnes and my business is Building the Boss. I'm pretty much your business bestie, helping you, coaching you through your business and providing knowledge that you may not have. And the show I think everybody on this planet should watch is The Flash. Okay, Nicole. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Gentles and I work with Center for Creative Economy um, and our uh, mission is to launch, grow and accelerate creative businesses. Um, I don't know if I was supposed to say Tony's first, but Tony's business is <laughs> building the boss um, and she's your business bestie um, and her show is The Flash and my show is, um, excuse my language, it's CH, not just H, but Shit's Creek uh, is my binge worthy show that shows hilarious and progressive and just great. All right, Aisa. Hi, my name is Aixa Haskins, and my business is Aixa Maria's Gift Baskets. And just an FYI, we are taking pre-orders for Easter. Um, I'll go with Nicole's business, which is Center for Creative Economy, and her favorite show is Schitt's Creek. And then my favorite show is Black Lightning. Thank you all so much for participating with that. Um, so why, the reason I asked them to do the show instead of just their business and that, because the business alone could have been with the fact that you wanted people to remember. The reason I added something personal in that way, number one, I mean, we all just learned about three shows that we could be watching if you're not already watching it, right? But really it's about, um, in, in, in thinking about networking and thinking about how you connect to other people when you're talking about your business, um, next time you meet Tony on the streets or whatever like that, you're like, oh yeah, I watched The Flash or, that's the girl that told us about the flash, but what did she say she do again? Oh, you help business, you help businesses. I need to talk to you because my business needs help. How do you help businesses, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Nicole wants us to watch Shit's Creek. Hold on, Nicole also works at Center for Creative Economy. What is that? Let me, you, you just kind of connect easier things like the shows with them. And that starts the conversation, which then builds onto other things that you can network and really get to know people. So you already know how the mind works, but you, you get the gist and you get the feel of that, right? Same thing with Aixa. You're like, oh, wait, she, she mentioned that there's a, a sale. They're taking orders for Easter. Wait, Easter? Well, she's taking orders for what? She said gift baskets. Oh, you know what? I need gift bas baskets for more than just Easter. Can Let me talk to her about that. And um, Black Lightning, I haven't heard of that show. I have. I've watched all these shows, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, those are just things that kind of run through your mind and you kind of remember people and you reach out to them and things of that nature, okay? So that's an, another really great way to keep people engaged in virtual settings, let people get to know each other, but also they could really find simple ways to connect and remember things about a particular person as you think about that. And again, 
don't lose focus on why you're doing some of these things. It, it is a form of marketing in the sense that you need to build those relationships because people what? People trust people, <laughs> okay? So, so keep that in mind. We won't do the next one, but it, this, this, I have not attended a virtual or hybrid setting yet where I have been upset that they have done this. Um, and that's the, the, the virtual dance party. They will literally start the meeting off, not just the music, because I've done it. I've, start meetings, I've started meetings in, in networking settings off, playing music in virtual settings, but they will have us dancing. You hear me? Like we would just be dancing. And it's really great because I've seen it where, like if it's something that I had to register for, if it's a group that we already know each other and we're just emailing, They've done it where you submit your song and you you figure part of the excitement is you don't know what song they're going to choose, right? So that's one of the reasons they even bring you there because you're like, if my song gets selected, I want to know what they're going to do with my song. But, you know, they typically choose a song that's about five minutes and they tell everyone, um, you know, they start with meeting off by telling everybody, listen, we're about to dance. So they give everybody a heads up. You tell people we're about to dance and you play that song and you just people are dancing and laughing before you even get into why you're meeting with them. Even if you're literally meeting with them with, about something so serious and you're wondering why are we dancing first, it makes a difference. So again, we're not gonna do that, but I wanted to share that to you as a great way to break the ice, especially if you're going into an intense setting, um, but you can also obviously do this in more relaxed group settings and ways as a way to connect with people. Um, with the caveat being in those intense, more strict and stiff, stiffer settings, know your audience. If it doesn't apply, if it doesn't make sense to do that, know your audience. So you need to research that um, before making a decision like that. Um, I think I have maybe two more. Um, the show and tell. Um, I don't know how many people are on the Zoom that have pets and quite a number of you have your screen off and I don't know that you would want to take it off. Um, to do this, so we, we may or may not do this particular activity, um, but if you're willing. Another great uh, icebreaker way to get to know people, um, people love pets, and, it, and it, the show and tell don't have to be pets. I use pets as an example because people love pets. I have a true statement. I do not love pets, never will own a pet, but people do love pets. And it's a great way in a small group settings because you know if you're if you're in a group with more than ten people you kind of don't want to do this because you'll be you'll be doing show and tell the entire meeting, but um, you know you ask those we're gonna do show and tell how many of you have pets and you bring their pet to the screen and tell us something cool about your pet you know whether it's just how you got your pet why you love your pet whatever and you can you know use maybe five minutes of your of a, of a networking setting to do that. Um, people connect over pets. I mean, you don't have to do pets. Once again, it could be, um, we're gonna do show and tell, uh, show, bring your favorite book, book to the screen. Tell us why this is your favorite book, um, whatever, things of that nature. Again, it could be, show us your favorite t-shirt. Why do you feel like this is, it could be anything during show and tell. Um, but just, just know that the whole idea is you're bringing that into a networking setting, not just to break the ice, but so that people can get to know people, um, you can find commonalities, uh, and then you go into the nature of whatever it is, the business that you need to talk about. And a lot of times, uh, I know I'm, I keep referring to business because at the end of the day, we're trying to help businesses accelerate at Hustle, but you can use these in non-business scenarios. Um, you don't have to feel like you're pressured into only using this in those scenarios. So just wanted to share that. Um, is there anyone, we don't have to do this, but I'm happy to, anyone that has a pet or, or that they would want to bring to the screen and do a show and tell? Stephanie looks like you're the first on the list. Can you see him? I don't even know how to work. Yeah, this we thing. can see him. There's Jordan. Here he is. <laughs> Say hi. Oh, and I have let another me, pet. Let me, let me stop sharing the screen for a second, Stephanie. I think this show and tell works better if I'm not sharing the screen. Oh, hold on. So where are you? Let me, there you go. Come on, show him to us. There he is. Say hi. <laughs> he needs a haircut right now. <laughs> this is Jordan. This is Jordan. How long have you had Jordan? Uh, I think six or seven years. He's a little guy. 
right? And right now he needs a haircut. It looks like an Ewok. Awesome. Right. Stephanie, do you have a business? Um, I consult in sales and then I work with my brother in his CBD business. So um, his CBD business is Rock and Roots Farm and they're out of Colorado. So I sell for him and then I consult for hotel companies, which obviously is not happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm taking awesome. as many classes as I can right now to broaden my horizons. <laughs> Awesome. We're glad that you have Jordan there with you as you as you manage and juggle all of that. Um, anyone else want to share? Anyone else want to do a show and tell? With their pet? I'll my Mario. Okay. Let me see. I have a picture of him since I'm at work. That's Mario. He's a miniature schnauzer. I named him after my grandfather. And he is going to be 10 in May. How long have you had him? Since he was a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. And he's going to be 10. Yeah. 10 in dog years is, is how, how old y'all? Uh, what, 70. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Awesome. And you've already told us about your business, unless there's something else you want to mention about your business. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else before? I think Hello. I was my person. This is, my name is Rachel and this is Charlie. He was born without eyes. Um, he is the fourth rescue that I've gotten from a place in Savannah. We actually meet in the middle to get the cats. <laughs> uh, three out of the four cats that we've rescued have um, physical challenges. And uh, he is just the sweetest little guy. So um, oh, yeah. he is, he is part of my house crew. And I am a graphic designer and chalkboard artist. So they often have to get locked out of the room when I'm working on big projects, because they have actually walked across them and messed them up. So for graphic design, it's okay for them to be in the room with me, which is what they prefer. But when it's anything else, they kind of have to sit outside and meow at me. So wow, Rachel, that's awesome. Now, is this is is this connected like your your um I, I don't want to say the word love, but your love for for um, pets and animals with certain impairments is that connected to a business that you are doing in any sort? Or is that just a personal? It's a, it's a personal preference. Like he, nobody wanted him. And so if I hadn't saved him and his support friend who was over here, um, if I hadn't chosen to save him, both of them would not be here anymore. Oh, wow. And the last two we got, they're actually brother and sister and they were found behind a shed behind a jail in Savannah. So I, I know there are a lot of pets around here that need saving, but um, yeah. Anyway, so no, it has wow. nothing to do with my business. It just has to do with my personality. This really just makes me wonder how I mentioned the Disability Awareness Month if that applies to pets, but it should. Um, did you want to share about your business before uh, we move on, Rachel? I can. Um, I'm a career graphic designer um, who specializes in print, but what I'm working on focusing is. Um, there are a lot of graphic designers, but there are not a lot of people who can do chalkboard handwriting like I do. So I'm a professional at that as well for uh, retail, restaurants, events, whenever we can have events again. Um, I also do celebratory outdoor chalk for a while and hopefully after while we can't be together to celebrate. So, you know, driveway art for people. Um, I also do art art, but I think the more applicable stuff is the graphic design and chalkboard. That's awesome. And I don't I don't know if you heard Nicole earlier talk about the Center for Creative Economy, but you have- Oh, I, I wrote her down. I would like oh, to- Okay. I was gonna yeah. say, if you have not connected to her and to them, that's a great group. That sounds like you would be, there'd be some great synergies. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank cool. you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna get back to the screen unless anybody else was really dying. I told y'all people love pets. We could probably do this the rest of the session, but um, unless someone else is dying to do this, I'm gonna get back to the to close us out in just a moment. We're good.
Okay. All right. I think I'm back to my presentation. Marlene, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see the presentation again? Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, let's see here. Um, so, so that was an example of show and tell where whatever the purpose of why you're getting together with people, you can also use a moment to get to know about them, find out, you know, find out things about their personality. I mean, in this particular case, I'm also interested in, in, in businesses. So I'm asking about businesses as well, but hopefully you saw how that can work and really be a great icebreaker into just about any scenario. Um, and then lastly that I have on this list, we also won't do this. Um, number one, we don't have time, but I just wanted to also share with you, um, share with you how, uh, about the scavenger hunt. Now, what I might do before we end this series next week, when, when we send a final list of other resources, um, I may add, there is a site that I visited once. Hopefully I can find it. They have maybe over 50 net, uh, icebreaker networking ideas, right? So even though I only shared what five today, there's so many others that you can use and figure out what works best for you and your community and your industry and your field. Um, so the last one I wanted to share is you can have a remote scavenger hunt. This, of course, in my opinion, works um, with more um, groups, obviously, than just you and one person. I actually wouldn't recommend it for one in one scenarios, just if you kind of have a team situation um, or if you have a community. Um, you know, a community event where part of the event, you're also wanting people to learn more about your business. The scavenger hunt can run however you want it to do. Um, I would recommend in, in remote settings and virtual settings, since we won't be able to plant items in places for people to go physically find, you can do that. Remember last week we talked about hybrid. You technically could do that, but that will take forever. And I don't know if it's the best scenario, but um, since you can't physically plant items, your best bet is creating a list of goal based subjective items um, examples is like find an item that makes you feel the happiest. You know, like you tell people find something that makes them feel happy, as opposed to saying find this particular item, you can say find find an item that that you, that's attached to a powerful memory for you. Um, find your favorite way to connect to others. So, you know, with me, I'll immediately grab my cell phone and say, this is, this is how I connect to people. Um, so you can, you can pretty much keep it very broad, subjective and, and, and goal focused, and you can do scaven a virtual remote scavenger hunt that way. And you can just have people find it and show it, if, if, depending on how many people you have in a group. Again, you know, I shared in the earlier part of this series, smaller groups allow for easier networking. So my, my preference would be if you were to do something like this, that you, as they share their items, you give them maybe 30 seconds to a minute to explain that item. Because again, you're getting to learn your customer in that way. Um, Cause hopefully you're, 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 you're strategic and who's in, in, a, in networking groups with you, but you're getting to learn potential customers and you're using an opportunity to show something about your business um, so that they're aware of your business. So you can use these things um to your advantage okay um and i'm pretty sure that's it for us today the only thing that i would say is next week we do close out this series um i have a few yeah next week we are closing it out with some tips and tricks that i i left out throughout it's so much more that we could cover, but I know we, you know we only have an hour. So uh, there's a few key things that I have I did not share during week one and two that I think it's important for you all to have. So we'll close out the week with that as you think about tips and tricks to marketing. I mean to networking and how it relates to marketing. And I also have um, a few prizes next week to announce from those that participated this week. Hopefully you'll be here, and if not, we'll find a way to reach you. But um, I have a few prizes just for. For our participants today just to thank you for, thank you for participating in that way um and yeah that that's that's today i told you i'm really determined to get us out on time like the last two three weeks i've been horrible in getting us out on time so i'm happy to see that i'm ending right at 1 30 today um i also have to i have a doctor's appointment at two so i have to go <laughs> um so that that probably helped me stay on track today as well but um again thank you all so much for joining us hopefully you can 
You can close out with us next week um, with this particular series, um, same time, same place. And then for the month of April, you know, we keep marking outside the box every single month, every single week. For the month of April, we are talking specifically about how customer service is the new marketing. Um, and um, we'll provide you more detail about that. Um, if you receive our emails, you'll see it in our email next week, but I'll also tell you more about that during the session. Um, are there any questions for me before we close out? Thank you so much. I'm seeing the comments in the chat. Thank you all so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, anyone have any particular questions? If not, I bid you good day. Um, Marlene, I'll look for your email so we can figure out why that didn't work. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have, let's see, is there a website to help with the virtual kits? Um, what I'll do, Jennifer, um, I'm not sure which specific kits you're talking about, but we have shared a, we have shared um, engagement apps. I am going to create another resource list with just a few more things um, for ne after ne next week's presentation. So if it's not on there, which you're referring to, you can always reach out to us. Hopefully what I just said was helpful. All right, awesome. Oh, she said she doesn't know why her mic isn't working. That's fine. I see your message. We got you. All right, all. Well, you all have a great rest of your day. Um, for those that are still with us, I, I hope you saw in our e-blast the, the, the challenge that Tony and Building the Boss is running. It was in the email, so you can know how to get engaged and, and, and interact with that. I think it's, an, uh, it's a wonderful challenge. So if you receive our emails, it's in there. If not, uh, reach out to Tony. She's here. Uh, you can find her on Instagram, Facebook, and all of the above. LinkedIn, of course, since it's a LinkedIn challenge. I mean, Tony, feel free to drop your email address both on the Facebook chat and in here. And have a great day, everyone. Y'all know I don't leave until y'all leave. So I'm just making sure I see y'all hanging around. Y'all have questions for me? <laughs> awesome. That's buildingtheboss at gmail.com for those that may not be looking at the chat. Okay, I'm going to assume there aren't any questions left. Bye, Rachel. Is it Samara? Do you have a question for me? Tony? Oh, no. You know, you said live, though, on Facebook, right? I absolutely do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I leave it just in case a question comes up that might be helpful to the Facebook audience before I, I got it. You. But, yeah, okay, I think that's it. Let me go ahead and end it. Well, now I meant to end the live. I almost ended the Zoom. I think you have a question for me, Tony.